playing with me. I go get a bag, ho, and I'ma ride for mine. That toilet sit by my side, so don't get out of line. Just go get a bag, ho, ain't nobody gon' give you shit. You reap what you sow, and I'm reaping these benefits. Cause I go get a bag, ho, I move without a sound. It ain't no sitting around. No, they wanna see me down, but I go get a bag, ho. Oh my god! Where did you come from? I well, since you're here, I guess we can go ahead and show you around. My name is Lily, and this is Lily's Escape. This is my reptile room tour. This is my first reptile room tour. I have not done this yet, so yeah. Um, a lot of you reptile keepers know, like, this is a, a never-ending thing. Like, I never, you never get to a point where you're, like, completely satisfied with your reptile room tour, but I figure it's, it's, it's good enough now for one reptile room tour. If I change anything else, I'll do another one. But anyways, um, if you like these kind of videos and you want me to post more of them, please like, comment, and subscribe and let me know. I guess we can start here. Uh, this is my black and white tegu. His name is Pickle. And this is a very temporary enclosure for him. He's going to get huge and he's going to need like an 8 foot by 4 foot enclosure. So I didn't really do anything um, really too fancy with the Tegu's enclosure because he's so destructive. Anytime I try to put any like cute little plants or anything in there, he just completely uh, destroys it. So this is Pickle and he just ate and he's in the middle of a shed as you can see here. He's shedding. It's on his tail now. I might have to soak him a little bit later. Alrighty, and down here we have my Russian tortoise. This is a very temporary setup for him. This is way too small for an adult male Russian tortoise. He needs at least a four foot enclosure, but for now it works. Um, he just ate, so he's up under here sleeping. He's got his belly full and he is content. All right, moving on. Down here, we have an incubator. I do plan on breeding some snakes in the future, so this is why I have a little incubator here to incubate my eggs. Um, and here, we have um, an African egg-eating snake, and she is hiding in her little hide. Um, should I take her out? I'm gonna take her out for you guys. I'm probably not going to go through and take out all the animals because that would take a very long time. We'll save that for an all my animals um, video. But for now, we can take her out. Where's her head at? I can't see her head. Oh, there she is. Okay. There she is. She has got substrate all over her, all over her. She is a little temperamental, but I don't worry too much because she doesn't have any teeth. Whew. She's getting huge. I do plan on putting her in a bigger enclosure, but um, I just want to work my way up with her. I don't want to stress her out too much by putting her in too big of an enclosure too soon. And I just got her water dirty. How nice. Right here, we have a little glow beta. There she is. Her name is Griselda. And here, we have my Malagasy giant hognose snake. She is just a baby. And I don't have any lights on this enclosure, I'm sorry, but I'll see if I can find her. I might not be able to. She's a really good hider. Oh, I found her. She's right there. She's just a baby. She's in a 40-gallon breeder. Um, this enclosure can last her a really long time. 
because she is just a baby now. Um, and moving on, down here we have my baby Cresta Geckos. Um, might I add, they are for sale. Uh, hit me up in the comment section. Um, send me your, uh, comment your email in the comment section if you want me to hit you up and give you prices and more pictures or whatever. I'll definitely do that. Uh, let's see if we can find some babies. See if any of them are out. They sleep during the day, so. And down here we have my springtail culture, my isopod cultures. Um, I'll go ahead and show you some of my isopods. These right here are the dairy cow isopods. And there are a lot of them. I use these for my bioactive enclosures. They are the cleanup crew. down there my spring tails um, up here we just have some store decor we have a mist king that I have not put together yet that I need to put together yet this is like a $200 system that's just literally sitting there but anyways moving on over here we have my beautiful green tree python caliber Over here in this beautiful bioactive enclosure with live plants, we have my adult male Cresta Gecko. He is right there. His name is Topaz. And he was a rescue. I really love the bioactive enclosures for my Crested Geckos because there's, or honestly for any animal, because they're just such easy maintenance. You don't really have to clean them out, put some ice pods and some springtails in there, live plants, and you're good to go. You might have to wipe off the glass from time to time, but other than that, it's, it makes life so much easier. Down here we have Amethyst, which I highly doubt we're going to be able to show you guys because she gets in this cork bark right here and you can't find her, but she's definitely in there. We have a bird's nest fern right here. It's really pretty. Um, okay. And over here, we don't have anything at the moment. Let me know what you think I should put in this enclosure right here or should I just save it for... One of the babies when they get bigger. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. All right. Here we have the free roam cricket. <laughs> His name is Earl. Okay. Over here, we have literally one of my favorite crested geckos. His name is Jasper. And he is also in a lovely bioactive enclosure. He is sleeping right down here. I'm going to try to wake him up without disturbing him too much. Come here, buddy. Come on. He's in a very weird spot. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick him up. Okay. Come on. There we go. Oh. He doesn't want to be handled today. <laughs> he does not want to be handled. <laughs> okay. So we'll leave him alone. <laughs> Um, over here is my favorite bioactive enclosure, um, mostly because this ivy has just overgrown the whole thing and it's just, I love it, it's so beautiful. But this is Cookie's enclosure. Cookie is the mother to these babies right here. Um, and let me see if I can find her. She's back here. Usually she freaks out too, so I'm gonna try to be careful. She gets in this plant. 
Are you stuck? Are you stuck in there? Oh, let me see. <gasps> there she is. There's the mama. Isn't she so pretty? Cookie is a beautiful cream Dalmatian. And I love her so much. I actually didn't breed her myself. I purchased her as an adult. And I guess the conditions that the breeder had them in was not, she didn't like them. So she um, retains her eggs or the sperm until she got to my house. And then she had her babies. Over here we have a snake rack holding a few of my younger snakes. And then above it we have this crested gecko, crested gecko enclosure. This is housing another one of uh, Cookie's babies. Um... I guess I'll just show you guys kind of what these tubs look like. This is my Brazilian rainbow boa. He's hiding right there. Okay. Um, and these tubs are really temporary. For my, these are just baby snakes. They're not full grown, so they will outgrow these tubs. I love snake racks um, for snakes that, you know, like babies and stuff. Because babies can be a little bit harder to get to eat sometimes. And it seems like they really like these smaller tubs when they're younger. Because they feel more secure and they will just usually eat better in my opinion. Um, but of course when they get older and they need bigger enclosures, I will definitely be rehousing re them. Um, over here, we have my leopard geckos. Um, go ahead and pull one out for you. I actually got this whole enclosure here um, off of Craigslist for like 150 bucks. Here's one of my leopard geckos. If I can grab him real quick. Come here, buddy. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Lick. Get in there. Now you don't want to let go. <laughs> Here they have some calcium without vitamin D3. Here's his little water bowl. And over here we have a little food dish that I'll put his insects in. And he has a warm hide, a cool hide, plenty of stuff to climb on. They really do well in these. Um, these are boa file plastic enclosures. And then we have my other crested, um, sorry, leopard gecko, Comet. Comet is a female. Oh, and I don't think I told y'all his name. His name's Ozzy. But Comet over here is a female. And she's hiding in the back back here. Move this so y'all can see her. Moving on. Down here we have my beautiful fox water cobra. This will be a massive snake when she gets older. 
I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. Y'all can see her. It's not time to eat. She just shed. Nice, beautiful shed there. And then down here we have my boa constrictor. She's a sunset or hog island boa constrictor. And I think she's in this hide down here. A lot of, of y'all saw her from my video, my unboxing video. She was shoved into a very small box for shipping. It was really sad. She's a very underfed boa constrictor. She's actually three years old. She's very small for her age because the guy was just really underfeeding her. Um, but she eats great now and she gets fed good now. And she's grown a lot since I got her actually. So she's calmed down a lot too. She had a really nasty attitude at first. And then over here we have another baby crested gecko um, that is hiding somewhere and I don't wanna dig them out. They literally all pretty much look the same. So that's his enclosure. And then down here in this rack, I have a few of my male ball pythons. I have three male ball pythons down here. He's ready to eat. Hello. Now, I know a lot of people have a problem with keeping ball pythons in tubs like this, but one, it's not one size fits all. Um, you really have to know your snake and put them in an enclosure that suits them, that they're happy in, that they're going to eat in, not one that makes you happy. So that's why some of my male ball pythons are in tubs. And then I have one down here that's in a bigger enclosure and I have more upstairs in bigger enclosures. And over here we have my gray banded king snake. This is Saint. He is one of my most favorite babies. Go ahead and grab him real quick. And here he is. He is a beautiful baby. I love the gray banded king snakes. They're just so much fun. And they're not spazzes like a lot of other colubrids. Okay. I did like my first naturalistic background. Um, using drywall and foam and all that. It was pretty fun. It was very time consuming. Um, but I just wanted to make a rocky background for them, for them because they are from Texas and a very, or from a really rocky desert area. So I kind of wanted to mimic that. And then I just gave him some branches for climbing, a couple of fake plants, water bowl, warm hide, cool hide, and he's good to go. All right, down here we have my Euromastics. Um, she is probably asleep. Euromastics are a fun, there she is. <laughs> Euromastics are a fun lizard species to keep. They're really easy to keep, um, uh, much like a bearded dragon. I actually think they're easier than bearded dragons to keep. Um, they don't bite. They run away and that's it. <laughs> so that is beans. My Euromastics. And they're also from a desert rocky area. So that's why I have these rocks here. Okay. Oh yeah, and they eat bird. They're um, unlike bearded dragons. They eat bird seed and like lentils and salad. So um, they are herbivores. Um, you need to do your research on what kind of greens they can eat, though, because there are some greens 
that can be toxic for them. And down here we have a male ball python. This is Cosmo. Um, he's hiding in this little hide right here, if you can see him. Cosmo's come a long way. He used to be one of my most finicky eaters, but he does great now. So proud of him. All right, over here we have my rack system. So these are all babies. These are not full grown snakes. Um, that's why they're in the rack systems. Uh, for an example, I'll show you Twyla here. Twyla is a baby. Oh gosh, I can't even get this open. Twyla, Twyla is a baby Western hognose. I need to change her water. She's a baby Western hognose. There's Twyla. Hognoses. This is a lavender western hognose. He's real pretty. He's got an attitude though. Mr. Attitude. But he's all talk. Just like most men. Always use hand sanitizer in between holding animals. You don't want to spread any kind of diseases or illnesses. Okay. And here, this is Rain. This is my Madagascar um, cat-eyed snake. Let's see where she's at. I think she's in this one. Nope. In this one? Nope. Oh, she's hiding underneath somewhere. Let's see if we can see her. She's right there. I'm going to try to dig her up. She looks like she's about to shed, so I'm not going to mess with her too much. Um, yeah, she's definitely about to shed. Sorry, baby. I'll leave you alone. Did you kind of get a little glimpse of her, though? Okay. All right, and then we have... Let me put some hand sanitizer on. This is Ivory. This is one of my newer additions. This is a piebald female ball python. She needs fresh water. I'm gonna change that real quick. And in here we have the baby. He is a pers per per He is a purple passion ball python. It might be a she actually. I'm not sure. Uh, he's a really feisty noodle, so I'm not gonna take him out. But he is actually the ball python that I hatched out myself. So he's doing really well. Um, he eats really well. Over here, we have one of my newer snakes. This is Venus. She is a clown, a pastel clown ball python. Okay. And then in here... We have my newest baby. This is why her, this is why their enclosures are so plain and boring is because they're new. But this is my Woma Python. She's doing really well. And then down here we have my floor 
Florida king snake. I'm not sure where she's at. Let's see. She might be right here. There she is. My Florida king snake. She's a lavender. She's so pretty. Okay. And then let's turn this this way. And here we have um, some bigger tubs. Um, these are like three and a half feet long, I believe. And then I want to say 16 wide. But this is Peaches. He's in his little paper towel roll. Peaches is a San Diego gopher snake. He's an albino, which gives him his red eyes and his orange color. And here we have Stella. Stella is a, another western hognose. She's an adult. She's a lot bigger. Whoops. And she loves to eat her so fat. Isn't her? She's a very fat girl. Have to watch her. She might nibble on fingers. <laughs> but she's an albino. And then we have this used to have my corn snake in it, but. I can't have corn snakes in Georgia, they're illegal, so I had to rehome her, unfortunately. But in here, we have another rainbow boa. And I actually wanna get her out to show you guys why her name is a rainbow boa, because she's like literally iridescent in, in, the, in the light. So let me grab her real quick. She's also in a bioactive enclosure, so whenever she sheds, I just leave it in there so that the little isopods can eat her shed. They love shed. You see the little isopod? It's kind of dark. This is Kaiushu. Kaiushu is also a rescue. So she was very much underfed at her old home. Let's um, put her in the light so you can see her iridescence. Let's see, where's the best place to do it probably? See the iridescence? It's better in like natural sunlight, but there's not much of that in here, so. Is it picking up on it? Mm -hmm. So over here, I just have like um, my supplements for my animals, Cresta Gecko diet, feeder crickets, feeder um, superworms, a tent gun, crucial, crucial. Um, more supplements. Got water, extra water bowls. Um, these little food thing, crested gecko food ledges, hides. The whole shebang. Um, and then we have over here. Just a little uh, mini fridge that I keep my salad in for beans and queso. And then I got like paper towels, vinegar, chlorhexidine, water and can, sprayer. And that's it. That's pretty much everything. I hope you guys enjoyed my reptile room tour. If you would, please go like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you want to see more stuff like this because... When you guys um, talk to me and let me know what you're thinking, it, it encourages me to make more videos like this one. So, yeah, can't wait to hear from you guys. And until next time, later.
It's pretty on the track. It's pretty on the track. It's pretty on the track. I bet your little bitch couldn't do it like me. Nope. I don't try to compete. I'ma just eat. These bitches lames. I don't play no games since I'm out of your league. You want a feature, wanna do it for free? Nope. That come with a fee. Why all these thoughts keep taking they pot? When I was on them, but it's nothing to see. Bitch, I'ma win with no cheat codes. Had to hit them again, so I reload. Wherever the money I we go. I ain't mad at the haters. I